Tonight, we start with breaking news out of Maine, where we're learning that at least 20 people are dead after a mass shooting. That's according to ABC News. This all unfolding in the town of Lewiston. That's about 45 minutes north of Portland, Maine. Right now, police are investigating multiple scenes, one location at a bar and grill restaurant, the other at a bowling alley. Now, police have released pictures of the gunman who is still at large tonight. And as law enforcement continues to look for that suspect you see there, Maine State Police are asking people in the area to stay in their homes. Obviously, this is a very fluid situation. We're going to be staying on top of stay with us on air and online as this situation continues to unfold again. At least 20 people killed in a mass shooting in Lewiston, Maine tonight. Back here at home, we are watching our weather. Adam Kasky standing by with more on what we can expect, Adam. A few hit or miss showers through the night here in San Antonio, most of it in the hill country. And then once we get toward the morning commute, notice how our rain chances jump up quite a bit in and around San Antonio, Bear County and surrounding communities. We're talking 60 to 70 percent, so becoming widespread, not continuous but coming and going in a widespread manner through the morning commute and even lingering into the early afternoon. Currently out there, we don't have a whole lot to speak of a little bit in Wilson County in and around 181 just outside of Floresville. Floresville just got clipped and nicked by a little shower and a very weak one locally in San Antonio. Not much. One little shower just popped up south of Bernie headed toward Bernie off to the west. This is where most of the action is, and we had talked about this that in the hill country is where the bulk of it and some of the heaviest rain is going to be over the next five to six hours. And notice how these showers are following each other. They're training, which also means that could lead to some localized flash flooding with accumulations of one to four inches in some neighborhoods. Here's our future cast and notice how it does indicate and it's on board with the rain mostly moving into San Antonio around the morning commute and then lingering into the early afternoon hours and then just becoming more isolated or stray in nature uh, thereafter. Another really good chance of rain, some beneficial rain coming. We'll talk more about how much we can expect when that hits and the all important strong cold front when it arrives and how much colder it's going to get coming up. Thank you, Adam. A big night for one big guy. That guy. There we go. The Spurs number one pick in the draft, making his regular season debut tonight for the silver and black, and you could feel the anticipation in the arena. The Wemby era underway as Spurs fans officially welcome the French phenom and future superstar. Now the Frostbank Center was sold out tonight for the Spurs regular season opener. RJ Marquez was there for the sights and sounds from opening night. Victor Wembanyama made his much anticipated regular season debut and the atmosphere inside the Frostbank Center was absolutely electric. We spoke to several fans tonight, younger fans, older fans, fans who came in from far as away as Germany and France. Let's check it out. It feels good as we came in the, the doors. The guy was yelling at, you know, go win me, things like that. So I was like, man, good energy right now. It feels amazing. I've uh, been coming the uh, last couple of years, and this is definitely different from then. Uh, so really great in here, for sure. Je m'appelle Lucie. Je viens de France. Soutenir les Spurs. <laughs> go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. Excited. I'm glad to see everybody back in the arena. There's a lot of excitement around Wimby. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just great to see everybody out and about representing the Spurs. Go Spurs. Go Spurs, go! The past couple years have been rough, but to get to this point right now, it's like, I, man, it's gonna, be, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be good. The atmosphere is amazing. Everyone's very hyped, and I really enjoy it so far, and it's, it's just an awesome feeling. The game hasn't even started, and you know, it's pretty early, two hours early. A line outside the door. Uh, his frame is insane. He can cover so much space on the court. I think he definitely can be a big role player for the Spurs in the X years, and I hope he'll develop well and becomes a star. All right, so you can expect this place to be rocking all season long as a new era of Spurs basketball begins with the one and only Victor Wembanyama. Reporting from the Frostbank Center, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Switching gears now new on the night beat Northside ISD staff is letting parents know about a weapon that was found on one of its campuses today. Now we have to say nobody was hurt. Staff says that no one was even threatened. Happened at Brandeis High School after a report was made that a student 
may have a gun on campus. Now, that individual was found and a firearm was discovered. And in that message to parents, Brandeis' principal praised students and staff who actually went ahead and made the report. Yeah, say some, see something, say something. Mm -hmm. Also new tonight, one minor in police custody and officers are looking for two more after this. A stolen car they were in crashed on the city's north side. Happened just after 5 o'clock on Patricia Drive, not far from Blanco and Wurzbach Parkway. Police say the driver of that stolen Audi lost control, rolled the vehicle in front of an apartment. The three minors jumped out of that car and started running away. Officers eventually caught up with one of them. We're told no one was hurt in the crash. Damaged cluster mailboxes and who's on the hook for actually fixing them? Yeah, that question has led to a back and forth from Texas Congressman Joaquin Castro and the United States Postal Service. Tonight team's John Paul Barajas has that dispute and also spoke with the people that it's affecting. Wrapped in caution tape and covered in notices that read, mailboxes were broken into, pick up mail at your post office. This is what people living in the Oakmont Downs neighborhood say their cluster mailboxes have looked like for a year. We've been here since 2004, and we've had these boxes vandalized three or four times prior to this time. There's never been a fight or an argument or a pushback on, no, we're not going to do it this time. It's your responsibility. But that appears to have changed. When the Homeowners Association reported a mailbox break-in last October, the U.S. Postal Service said repairs are the community's responsibility. That emblem indicated to them these are owned by the U.S. Postal Service, right? And when, when homeowners had to go get a new key, they didn't ever talk to the HOA. They, they went up there. This one right here, look, all of them. Julia O'Mara is the treasurer of the Oakmont Downs HOA. She contacted U.S. Congressman Joaquin Castro's office about the issue. He sent a letter to the Postal Service saying, in part, quote, I am concerned that as USPS updates policies to lower operating costs, these new policies negatively impact mail delivery. In a letter from the USPS to the congressman's office, they state that in the past they have repaired damaged or vandalized units, but that was under unique and extenuating circumstances, then reiterating that the responsibility of these units has always been on the HOA. The United States Postal Service is refusing to maintain those mailboxes, something that they had done in these neighborhoods, some of them for 20 or 30 years. For those affected, it's more than the inconvenience of having to go to the post office. So if you have the key to this, you can't open this, this door. O'Mara says repair quotes start at $52,000, and that's before installation and removal costs. Something she hopes to make other neighborhoods aware of. They're going to get blindsided. They, I mean, how many of them have that much money? For now, the Oakmont Downs HOA says they're going to hold out hope that the United States Postal Service will repair their mailboxes. As for when there was a policy change putting the responsibility of mailbox maintenance on the community, we asked USPS about that, but they did not address it in their letter. And we have that full letter on our website, KSAT.com. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, JP. In other news now, a San Antonio man who admitted to killing a woman is going to spend the next four decades of his life in prison. A judge sentenced Francisco Javier Garcia Ventura to 40 years in prison. According to police, he confessed to killing 32-year-old Crystal Garcia back in September of 2021. Garcia Ventura told the judge that he felt like he had to defend himself against the mother of four. And I'm sorry for taking the mother's life, but I had to defend myself against either her or me. Now, the victim's family says that they hope that Garcia Ventura changes his ways in prison. By the way, once he's done serving his time, Garcia Ventura is going to be deported. Newly released records reveal just how much it cost the state of Texas to take over a bar near Alamo Plaza. Yeah, the owner of Moses Rose's hideout had been in a protracted fight with the city's state general land office and the Alamo Trust. They wanted to make way for a visitor center and museum as part of a plan to redevelop Al Alamo Plaza. The city even started the imminent domain process after the owners rejected a best and final offer of a little more than five and a quarter million dollars. So when a deal was struck in August, though, that price was kept secret, but the uh, Texas Attorney General's office ordered that the sales agreement be released. So now we know. It cost $6.75 million. By the way, the Visitor Center is slated to open in 2027. Let's go to your Nightbeat News Flash now. Republicans have their Speaker of the House. Congressman Mike Johnson of Louisiana has been elected to that role by a vote of 220 to 209 with a few absences. 
Johnson quickly sworn into office by Republicans desperate to end the candidate carousel for House Speaker. He was actually the fourth candidate Republicans nominated to replace Kevin McCarthy. The United Auto Workers Union and Ford have reached a tentative contract agreement to break the nearly six week old strike against the company. UAW members could be notified about that agreement as early as tonight. The new deal could set precedent for the agreements with Stellantis and General Motors, the other two companies still involved in strikes. And that's a look at your Nightbeat Newsflash. All right, the Battle of Flowers Parade is still months away, but we are getting a sneak peek tonight. The high schools participating in the big event found out what the themes of their floats are actually going to be, and boy, were they excited. I know it's very important, and it's a huge part of, like, San Antonio. And just to be able to, like, be a part of it is an honor. Okay, so I don't know how it's going to look, but the, some of the themes that you can expect to see are Metal Mania, Picnic in the Park, and all creatures great and small. There you go. The Battle of Flowers Parade kicks off on Friday, April 26th. Mark your calendars. A Parkinson's disease can be a punishing condition that takes away bodily functions. Now a local neurologist wants everyone to know about a new kind of treatment. And as we had to break, question here, are you ready for this year's Dia de los Muertos Festival? Because it's happening this weekend on October 28th and 29th at Hemisphere Park. To get your tickets and to learn more about it, do that. Scan the QR code that you see right there on your screen. We'll be right back. Tonight, hope for people with Parkinson's disease. The brain disorder can take away basic bodily functions, but a San Antonio neurologist wants people to know about a new and different kind of therapy that can reduce those symptoms. Well, the night team's Patty Santos spoke with that doctor and he explains how that therapy works and also how you can find out if it's the right choice for you. Hold your hands in front of you, keep them like that. That's difficult to take when you can't do things for yourself. At only 61, Elva Brown has been living with Parkinson's disease for 13 years. She has what's called young onset Parkinson's. My hands sometimes don't work. I can't write sometimes. I can't uh, cook. It's not that often, but it happens. Medication helps her manage, but... As the disease progresses, her medication will increase and some may lose their effect. With the right hand, can you tap like this? Her neurologist, Dr. Juan Ramirez Castañeda, says Brown is a good candidate for deep brain stimulation therapy. Very common that people with uh, deep brain stimulation, they decrease the, the amount of medications they take, the frequency. During surgery, small wires are implanted into the patient's brain. The wires carry electrical stimulation to the part of the brain that controls movement. Helps control those um, those motor symptoms, which again are usually tremor, slowness, and stiffness. But there's concerns that many Parkinson's patients may not realize this life-altering treatment is an option. It's all about improving the quality of life of of, of, of a person. It's it's a little scary, but it's um, if it's an option, it's an option. Brown says her desire to be more in control of her body outweighs her fear of surgery. I want to be able to not shuffle when I walk. I want to be able to get to from here A to B. Dr. Ramirez Castaneda will be a part of a free educational event this Saturday for families who want to learn more about the treatment. Just head to ksat.com for registration information. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. And our hearts go out to her. We certainly hope that it works and that she feels good. Yeah, live came outside right now, 78 degrees. And you know, I was inside and outside the Frost Bank Center. Kind of, You could really I mean, there was a nice, cool breeze that came in about 6.30 tonight, Adam. Yeah, it was probably one of those uh, cooling showers that we had. We had a couple of those cooling showers hit San Antonio, downtown, surrounding areas, and you could easily get a nice little uh, outflow as those collapsed. Then it got humid again <laughs> right behind it. More beneficial rainfall is on the way. First thing in the morning through the early afternoon, then especially again Sunday night. As our strong cold front hits and paves the way for a chilly Halloween. Just how cold? We'll take a look at this. We'll be in the 80s again for highs every afternoon, Thursday through Sunday. But once that front hits Sunday night, you'll feel it immediately. This is one of those fronts that will slap you in the face and you're going to notice it right when it arrives around sunset on Sunday. And we're looking at temperatures in the 40s all day long, Monday and Tuesday for Halloween. So 
trick or treating is going to be on the cold side this year. Plan for that. Prepare appropriately. 60s and 70s across the state, but let's look at the colder air already. Parts of Wyoming, 23 degrees. Montana in the teens. Minot, North Dakota, 24. And some teens and 20s in Canada, where the source of the cold air is. That's pushing southward. And it's going to move its way down the plains gradually over the next few days. And notice on Sunday, it has moved through North Texas. But during the daylight hours, we're still warm well into the 80s with the high humidity. Then Sunday night, it moves through. And that cool air is in place for several days into next week. So for Halloween costumes, choose the warmest option. Do any kind of alterations you need for the kids. Add some layers if you can or have to plan for that. Temps will be in the 40s throughout all of trick or treating with a slight chance of rain. We can't rule out a few lingering showers during trick or treating, but it's still too early to tell if we will have active rain in our area exactly at trick or treating time on Tuesday. Let's talk rain. We've got more on the way. Yes, we do. Right now, most of it is in the hill country and out in Valverde County, Del Rio, just getting clipped by a downpour. But a lot of these are following, following each other, which means they're training, you know, kind of like train cars, and that can lead to higher accumulations for some neighborhoods. Just look at the trend over the past six hours. This axis right through central Texas, that's where the energy axis is. That's going to slowly be working its way eastward, and we think our time frame is going to be tomorrow morning for the commute on into the early afternoon to tap into most of that. I mean, an, an additional four inches closer to Waco and Dallas possible just through tomorrow and even on into Friday around here. The hill country could easily see some widespread amounts of one to three inches locally up to four with maybe some flash flooding in parts of the hill country, some street flooding in and around San Antonio, closer to an inch for some neighborhoods, not everybody, but for some neighborhoods. As for the overall chances, biggest takeaways tomorrow morning and midday and then again Sunday night into Monday. We'll still have opportunities in between, even Friday, some scattered activity popping up, but the main events, I think, will especially be in events. Doesn't mean that it's going to be raining the whole time. Just those passing showers becoming more numerous tomorrow morning through midday. And then again, Sunday night on into Monday. Tomorrow, we start the day at 73 at 70% chance of rain. Then by five o'clock, we're at 82 rain chances drop down to 30%. Seven day forecast. What I really want to point out here, not just the cold, but the wind. You can't have these strong cold fronts without gusty winds. So Monday, even Sunday night, you'll be hearing and then feeling that wind. And look at this 40s for lows Wednesday morning next week. How would you feel about the potential of upper 30s in Ooh, San Antonio? Wow. Huh? Something to watch. OK, but you know, regardless of what's going to be happening next week, it was hot at the Frost Bank Center. You know, it was electric. Uh-huh. It was crazy because we've been to many games there yes. before and the tunnel where Spurs run out, the fans line up. I don't think I've ever seen that many fans lined up to watch a player come out in Victor Wimanyama, even when the Spurs were winning championships. Two hours before the game started. Yeah, it was crazy. And then yeah. all the media down on the floor trying to get snaps of Wimby as well. It was nuts. Spurs, Mavs, regular season opener, Wimby's regular season debut. Plus in the NFL, the Cowboys and Texans are both back in action this week. Coming up. This was the pregame scene inside the Frost Bank Center tonight ahead of the Spurs regular season opener with the Dallas Mavericks. And it's also the regular season debut for Victor Wimbanyama. First quarter, Wimby gets the ball from downtown. It's good for his first regular season point to three pointer. And the Spurs lead 13 to seven. Victor's dad and sister in the house for this one. And later in the first quarter, Mavs ball and San Antonio creates a turnover. Back they go. Devin Vassell gets it and throws down a monster slam dunk. Wimby had six points in the first quarter and the Spurs led 43-36 after one. Let's check out that score for you now. And uh, the Spurs lead 76-75 in the third quarter. Wimby had six points at halftime. Vassell scored a team high 15 points in the first half. Jeremy Sohan, Kelvin Johnson each had 10. And Luca led all with 16 points in the first half.
Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Fresh off of their bye week, the Dallas Cowboys are back to work this week as they get ready for the Los Angeles Rams. Now they beat the Chargers 20 to 17 a week ago Monday to hit their break at four and two this season. In that game, star linebacker Micah Parsons got his one and only sack less than two minutes ago in the contest. He said he understands that the other team is trying to stop him from getting sacks. Now Parsons wishes every snap resulted in a sack, but he knows that's not realistic. If I could go out there and have 50 sacks, I could. I wish I could. You know, if they passed it 50 times, I wish I got 50 sacks. So, of course, I wish every play, you know, sometimes you might get there, the ball might come out fast. Sometimes you get there, um, you know, it could be a screen, it could be a draw, like whatever it is, things where you feel like this is your opportunity or, you know, one time you think oh, I got a nick on this guy and next thing you know they chip you, you know, or next thing you know they slide in the way, it might be spread out to the right. Um, it's just different things just try to throw you off and take you out of your rig. The boys will host the Rams Sunday at noon and KSAT 12 Sports will be there. The 3-3 three three Houston Texans will also resume play this week when they play at the 0-6 Carolina Panthers Sunday at noon. And when they do, the top Overall selections in the 2023 NFL Draft, Carolina quarterback Bryce Young drafted number one overall, Houston QB C.J. Stroud drafted second overall, and Houston defensive end Will Anderson, third overall, will be on the field, meaning this contest can become the first game in the common draft era to feature the top three selections from the most recent NFL Draft in the same game. That's pretty cool, right? Also cool, Young and Stroud have been friends since middle school, and now they'll face off in the NFL for the very first time. It is really cool. It's a blessing um, to just know that we're from the same area. Um, we grew up knowing each other, and then our parents know each other. Our moms are really close. Our dads know each other. Um, and um, it's cool just to see somebody uh, as their journey has gone from high school to college and now into the league. And it's, it's a blessing to have a brother um, like that to go through the same type of struggle, um, the same the same type of pressures and things like that. So we, we talk a lot about that stuff. Um, in the offseason and things like that. So it's a blessing um, to have somebody like that in my life. When asked today about selecting Bryce Young first overall instead of Stroud, Panthers head coach Frank Reich said, quote, we got the guy that we wanted and we couldn't be happier about that, end quote. SAFC will take their playoff skills on the road after the break. The playoffs continue on Friday night for San Antonio FC. The team is about to leave for a trip to Sacramento for the Western Conference semis against Sacramento Republic FC. But how did they get to this point? This past Saturday, they beat the Colorado Spring Switchbacks 1-0 thanks to Jorge Hernandez's goal in the 55th minute. San Antonio defender Mitchell Tainter has had multiple stints playing for Sacramento Republic and knows all too well what the environment is going to be like when they get up there. But he's confident his guys are going to be up to the challenge. You know, we're going to expect a full house there and they're going to be raring to go. It's a, a playoff game, a semifinal for them, and they're going to, you know, think that they can come win this game, which, you know, the higher seed and, you know, on paper, you know, it's, uh, you know, they, they could potentially win, but we're going to go out there, do our best and, uh, you know, see, see where the cookies fall. The cookies need to crumble into a win for San Antonio FC so they can have a chance to repeat as USL champions. That match against Sacramento Republic is on Friday night at 930. Houston Astros manager Dusty Baker has decided to retire. The 74-year-old helped the Astros win last year's World Series, but he'll also be remembered for his 26 years as a manager of multiple big league clubs, along with his 18 years playing in Major League Baseball. The Astros will make it official during a press conference tomorrow at Minute Maid Park. Probably not exactly the way he wanted to go out, but no. he's been so successful as their manager. Absolutely, and he's beloved by so many in baseball. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. Yep. We'll be right back. You see more rain opportunities. This is good. And we'll have some scattered to widespread action tomorrow morning through the early afternoon. And then some scattered stuff the first half of Friday, I think, as well. Saturday and Sunday generally dry. Things pick up again Sunday night through Monday and temperatures drop big time. I mean, bus stop Monday morning, completely different than what we've had. We'll be in the 40s all day Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, let's go ahead and prepare for that. Thank you so much for that, Adam. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. GMSA starts at 5 a.m. tomorrow. See you tomorrow.